In last week's video, we created Fisher Transformer scans for the built-in FW Fisher Transformer indicator. Now, a quick reminder for those of you that did not watch the tutorial, but I suggest you do, it's completely free and the scans you will need for this portion of the video. Now, we built three different scans in this uh, tutorial. The first was scanning for just places in which we had only a magenta arrow. So that was really step one, the most base level scan. After that, we layered on stacked arrows, which is what we're going to be using in today's video. That's this sort of a format right here, where you have the magenta arrow plus something else. Another example right here. Really gives you a little bit more weightage that you're expecting trend to start to switch. The third scan that we had built was then introducing in trend as well, such as the moving averages, the market pulse, things of that nature. In today's video, what we're going to do is use the second scan, so the one that we have stacked arrows for, run it off of a weekly time frame chart, take our list of stocks that we get from that result, and plug that into a very simple script that we write, which is a basic back tester for the Fisher Transformer. We're going to measure once the signal is true, so once we have stacked arrows, what happens for the next X days. And in my case, I'm going to be using the number five. So from the point we get our signal, what happens for the next five bars? Since we're using a weekly time frame, it'll actually be five weeks, not five days. But this gives you an idea of what to expect. If you came down to, say, a one-minute chart, that would tell you what to expect for the next five minutes. So that's the purpose of today's video. Let's get started with first using the second scan to try and generate what are our weekly uh, candidates anyways. What's triggering with stacked arrows off of our weekly time frame chart? So now let me go ahead and bring in that same shared scan link that we have. Again, this is the second one in which... Uh, we're really looking for the magenta arrow, which is the top part. This condition needs to be true, and we'd like to see either one of these two arrows be true. And we're going to change this from the daily to the weekly time frame here. So let's come in, choose weekly, weekly for the second batch of conditions as well. If you'd like to know more about how these scans are built, the previous tutorial video is the one to look at, the FW Fisher Transformer scans. I'll link that as well, but in today's video, let's go ahead and run these results. Now this is scanning inside of the S&P 500. Let's see if we find anything inside of this. If not, we can go ahead and widen the scan. All right, so inside of this scan, we have 21 results, and that's pretty much all we need. That's perfect for what we'd like to test in today's video. So from this 21, we'd like to find a list of all of the stocks in which for the next five weeks, uh, we see positive movement. So we have a bullish signal here. That's where we're going to measure today's close, so the closing price from this week's close, all the way up to the closing price for the next five weeks. Historically, every time these conditions have been true, what has happened? Now our goal is from this list of 21 to try Try and narrow it down to a more manageable list based off of what has back tested well using the same signal right here. So let's go ahead and get started. We have our list of 21. I can go ahead and save this as a watch list. Let's call this Fisher Transformer Weekly Bullish Signals. And we'll say 94. So I can save this. And now, the one other thing that we can also do is come into our ThinkScript editor and just copy the first code here to start to build our back tester. So I'll minimize this, click the Studies icon inside of our Charts menu, navigate over to the Strategies tab, and here, click Create. Now, at the top, we can go ahead and paste in that same condition we had, which was our plot signal code. And instead of having this as a plot, we can change this to a def variable. And then here, I'm going to add in the other two uh, arrows as well that we were looking at. So one was, if I go ahead and copy this in, and then we can change the 17, I believe one was an eight by five arrow. And once we have that one, we can go ahead and add in our OR clause for the second arrow. And then here we can paste this in one more time. And I believe the second one is a five by three, I think. We can double check that. All right, cool. So as long as we have no errors here, this is good to go. So now we can go ahead and write in our add order code. So here we can say something like add order, order type, and this is going to be buy to open. And here we can say that our Boolean condition for whenever we'd like to buy is whenever we have the signal that we've plotted above. If that signal plots, use the closing price of that signal, um, and then we'll say quantity is one. Now, I can go ahead and add in our second piece of this, which is going to be the closing order. So we can say order type sell to close. And this time, instead of signal being true today, we would like to see where signal was true. Uh, we said five bars ago, so let's use five there. 
Uh, and then we can use the closing price of today's candle as well, closing out the one share that we have. Now, one thing that I think makes sense just to do right off the bat is create an input variable here, which is something like input uh, bars uh, forward, and then we can say something like five, right? And so that allows us to then take bars forward and substitute that as a variable inside of this array. Now, if I click OK, what we should see is a back tester that plots on our charts. It has an entry every time we have some sort of a stacked arrow. That's what we would expect. Uh, and it exits whenever we're five days into the signal. So the signal needs to have plotted five days prior. If that condition is true, then we're going to use the closing price today to close out the trade. What this should help us do is understand what has gone up for the past five weeks, where we can use the back testers functionality for a very quick test. So let's go ahead and run this, see if this actually works the way we expect. So I'll click OK here. I can remove everything else from my chart just so we keep things a bit quicker. And I can also turn on the display floating PL so we can see this uh, visually on our charts here. Now we can come into a weekly time frame chart here. And off of our weekly time frame, we're seeing that we've had this signal trigger one time, I believe, at least so far off of DHI. That's obvious. So let's go ahead and check this one out. So our entry should be the candle in which we had stacked arrows. So we had stacked arrows right here. The condition was true in this candle. The entry is using that closing price and it triggers the next day. Now we'd like to see if it was in this trade for five days, one, two, three, four, and five. And it's using the closing price of this candle to get out. Now you can see right down here using the histograms that the strategy overall off of the weekly time frame bearish inside of DHI. So that's the overall premise. Now let me go ahead and expand the left hand side. We can collapse this and we can load in our Fisher Transformer weekly signal. So we just created and I have this going back 20 years. And all we need to do is go through and find all the places in which we see the histogram looking exactly like we're seeing right down here below. So Apple is one of those symbols that's on the list. If we keep coming down, AMT, a symbol that's not on the list, a bearish trade, in fact, on AMT. Uh, Baxter, Baxter bullish as well. We're seeing green arrows. Now, of course, this trade hasn't triggered all that many times. If I right click this, you'll notice that on our strategy report, six total orders out of which four of the six have been winners. So that's the way I would use this. But overall, the strategy from a PL standpoint is green. Keep coming down, eh, bio a little bit less interesting eBay, a bit more interesting as well. A little bearish period right here, but then we bounced up. So overall, green PL. EQIX, positive right here, Equinix. Uh, EW, Edwards Life Sciences, eh, mediocre in terms of positivity. Facebook, negative. FRC, negative. FRT, negative. Fortinet, positive, but few signals. Not really doing a whole lot there. Uh, GNRC positive, but you'll notice here the histogram has been declining, suggesting that the more recent trades have actually been taking away from the PL. So that's one we can ignore as well. We have Google, uh, same thing, so we can ignore Google as well. HCA, nothing too interesting. IQV looks a bit better, but I think it's just the most recent trades here that have led to a nice move. MTD positive as well. Newell Brands, positive as well. This one looks a bit more interesting, right? A lot of decent trade opportunities. The histogram for the most part looks like it's been steadily climbing. So that would be a nice one. We have OKE. We have uh, Picard, which also, again, nice steady climbing histogram suggesting profits are increasing with each trade. Uh, PLD, negative, and then SYK, positive as well with a little bit of a bearish patch here. So if you're looking for some of the cleanest ones that we had, we had Apple, uh, we had, I believe, Baxter, we had uh, EQIX, you had EW, Edwards Life Sciences, I think that was one. Um, most recently, we had Picar, we had Newell Brands. And so that's how I would use this back tester. It's meant to give you a very quick back of the napkin sort of approach as to once we get the signal, what happens for the next five weeks in this case, and where do we find places in which the signal has been overwhelmingly positive? That means the PL is green, you're looking for more winners than losers, you can right click and really investigate the report a bit more if you'd like. And if we just do that one last time in Newell Brands here, you'll notice Newell has 15 total orders, one, two, uh, three, four, 
five, six losers out of the uh, 15, so nine out of 15. Not bad overall, but we'd like to try and find places in which that number continuously gets better. So hopefully this tool, this process gives you a way to do exactly that. It gives you a nice method to run the Fisher Transformer scans every week or every day. Use a very quick and simple back tester for whatever days you're looking for this trade period and try and find the best opportunities. All right, take care everyone. Good luck trading and we'll see you in the next update.